So we'll just hit finish there to save that configuration and quit. So that's it for the Quest uh, plugin installation. Now our module is uh, is Quest worthy <coughs> or Quest ready. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, fire up the uh, or open up our area that we're going to want to put our first quest in and talk a little bit about that. Um, like any Legends module, uh, you're going to want to make sure your area, um, you know, on enter and on exit scripts are updated through uh, through the mass configurator buttons as you've seen in previous videos. Uh, so you, you want to make sure you do that. I didn't have to do it here because I already did it from the from the AI and Spawn plugin. So uh, let's talk a little bit about those. Um, some of the features of the Quest plugin are dependent upon other plugins. So for example, the reason why I have the Legends AI plugin is installed is because um, there are quests objectives in here called escort type quests. So you can ha escort a guy or uh, you know uh, from you know point A to point B kind of thing, and that leverages the AI plugin. So the AI, pl AI plugin already has the code built in for doing escort quests. So the Quest plugin will leverage that. That's why I have that one installed. The spawn plugin is useful for quests where you need to go and destroy a placeable object. Um, so you, you know you want uh, somebody says you know I need you to go blow up the orc catapult kind of thing. So you run over and you blow up the orc catapult, but you do want that orc catapult to respawn for other players to be able to do their quest too. So the spawning plugin handles that, and the quest plugin knows this, so it leverages the spawn plugin. So that's why I have those two, just to enable those couple of extra features of the quest plugin. Uh, again, you just have to have them installed. You don't actually have to be actively using, you know, the AI or the or the spawn plugin, but the quest plugin will use them when it needs to. Just having them installed is enough. Um, so yeah. So let's go through this little village here. Um, one of the first things that I like to do uh, as a builder is, you know, to let people know where important things are in your village. Uh, you can do that with you know map notes or whatever. But it's kind of nice to have you know a little a little quest, a little uh, FedEx quest, where you know maybe we'll send people around our village to see the sites. You know, uh, go take a look at this, go take a look at that. You know, and come back and you know I'll give you some experience points kind of thing, just to, just to explore your village. So this is kind of one of the most this is probably one of the simplest types of quests to create. Uh, you know, uh, step one of writing your quest is you want to plan your quest. So what do I actually want to accomplish with this quest? Well, we've got that done. We've got we want our player to go around and explore our village and get some experience points for doing that. Uh, we're only going to need one NPC for this quest, so just a guy who's going to greet the player and and you know um, uh, tell them what you know so what are some of the sites they should go look at. So that that's generally in our in our head what we want to do with this quest. Uh, we're going to get them to take a look at you know the mine. Here's a little mine right here. We'll get them to take a look at the tower over there. Things like that. So that's what we want to do. So we have that plan in our in our mind. So let's create that quest, and it's relatively simple to do. We just go plugins, and we fire up the Legends Quest plugin, and then we go File New. Quest. Now there's four types of quests you can have and we'll explain those in future videos. But for now most of the most of the you just need to know that most of your quests are probably just going to be the quest type, this one right here. So we're going to create a brand new quest here with that. And then up pops the first screen. So creating a quest there's a there's a lot that can be done uh in it. So uh I'm gonna try and go through as much as I can. But you'll a lot of the features that you're going to see we're not going to use yet because therefore you know the bigger more advanced quests for this simple quest we're not going to use a whole lot of of what we see on the screen so of course uh, the name of the quest is uh you know welcome to legends uh, we'll just say welcome to legends that'll be the name of our quest so the name of the quest is what appears in our journal and things like that how much experience we want to give so uh, you know we're going to give 50 experience points we're not going to give gold or anything for this just some experience points and it's going to be you know recommended for level one the recommended level is here this is not a requirement the player doesn't have to be a particular this particular level to use this what recommended level means is that when we're looking at our quest journal it's actually going to show us a difficulty uh, by way of pictures and colors in our quest journal 
uh, it's going to use that recommended level to determine what those uh, colors should be. So for example, if we see a quest in our journal with a green title, that means it's good for our level. If we see it for with like a red title, that means it's challenging for our level. So this one is going to be recommended for level 1. And that's all that does. Difficulty, this is also to help a player understand how difficult a quest might be. Um, if, it, uh, if it's a quest for a person who could do by themselves, no problem, then we'd use solo normal. Uh, if it's a challenging quest for someone, it'll be solo difficult. If it's meant for a group or meant for a, or a difficult group or even a raid. So again, all this is is to help a player identify how difficult a quest is. Um, there'll be a little icon in their quest journal with you know a single person in it signifying that it's a solo quest or there'll be an icon with multiple people in it in the picture to show them that you know it's a it's a group type quest so for this example we're just going to say this is a solo normal so that's all these two do is just to help the player kind of identify how hard this quest is uh, whether these th this whole section here is all requirements, whether the player has to have another quest you know started, whether they have to have one finished, if this is going to link to another quest, uh, if the player has to be a required level, so this is where a certain level ha you know the player has to be a particular level, whether they have to be a particular class or a particular race uh, is there. If they have a, if they have to have a particular item in their inventory to be able to start this quest, if they have to be a particular alignment, or even if they have to have a particular feat to be able to start this quest, without meeting these requirements, the player just will not be able to start this quest. Uh, the repeatability section. So again, we don't need any requirements for this one. Repeatability. This is if they if you want this quest to be repeated uh, or have the ability to be repeated. Uh, this is basically the number of times the quest could be repeated. Um, so the player finishes the quest, they, they can do it again this many times, or they can just continue to do it infinitely. This is the time uh, elapsed to repeat in minutes, so you know if you want the player to have to wait five minutes before they can repeat the quest, you can put in five here so that they have to wait five minutes in between each repeat. So kind of handy for that, but we're not going to need it for this quest. So we, uh, we hit next, and now we look at the quest uh, initiator screen. So the quest initiator, this is the uh, person who's going to uh, start our quest, whether it's an NPC or an object or an item. Uh, this is the this is how we're going. This is the the thing or person we're going to interact with to begin our quest. So this is our very first starting object. So uh, we already said we wanted to be you know an NPC greeter who's you know kind of kind of going to welcome us to the village and. Uh, and he'll be an NPC. So we're going to hit new because this is going to be a brand new NPC and we're, we'll give him a name and we'll just say, uh, you know, John uh, Greeter. Just keep it simple. So that's his name. Uh, he'll be an NPC. Uh, Prequest one liner. So because this quest has no requirements um, or uh, level requirements or anything like that, we're not actually going to need a prequest one liner. If the quest required a player to be a particular level, say, you know, the player has to be level 2 to be able to do this quest, this is the message that a player would see when they try to speak to John Greeter if they haven't met all the requirements yet. So, you know, this could be, you know, come back later kind of thing or, or whatever message you want to say. <clears throat> because we don't have any requirements, as soon as a player logs into our world, they're going to be able to do this quest, so we don't need a pre quest one liner at all. A post quest one liner is the message that John Greeter is going to t say to us from the point of when we finish the quest and forever on after that. So when we finish this uh, this quest, uh, what is John Greeter going to say whenever we try and talk to him again? Um, so we'll we'll just say something like, uh, you know, um, good to see you again. I'm glad you're finding your way around our village. You know, just something simple. Uh, then we get into the actual quest itself. So this is the standard conversation. Uh, of course, we want to offer the player the quest. So this is the message that John Greeter is going to say to the player when he uh, first meets the player and wants to offer them this quest. So we'll just say, well, hello there, adventurer. Welcome to the town of legends. Our, oops, spell that right, quaint little v. 
village.